Hi, and welcome to Talking Trash, the only government program that's dedicated to the topic of, well, trash. I'm Rhonda Oyer, and I'm a solid waste expert at the Michigan Department of Environment, Great Lakes, and Energy, and I talk trash every day. As part of this series, you'll learn all about materials management topics such as recycling, composting, landfills, and more. There's so much more to trash than what you put in your trash can, but what a great place to start. Let's go. Most people imagine that their trash goes to a giant hole in the ground where it piles up to the sky. However, today's waste management strategies are much different. Our waste goes to a landfill, specifically a type two landfill that is designed to safely manage and contain our waste. After leaving your neighborhood, the garbage truck goes to a landfill where the waste is weighed on a scale before going to an open area known as a cell where it is dumped. Then a 50 ton machine with spiked wheels drives over the waste, compacting it into the cell. And that happens over and over again until the landfill is full. Have you ever wondered what a landfill looks like or how it's built? Let's call Brett Coulter, a landfill geologist and see if he can help us. Rhonda. Hi, Brett. Do you have a minute to talk about landfills? Yeah. So landfills are built with a series of protective barriers to prevent waste from contaminating the surrounding environment. Here are the basic components of a landfill liner system. First, we have the bottom liner, which is typically made of two feet of compacted clay or equivalent material, followed by a plastic liner or at least 10 feet of natural clay. Then there's the secondary collection system. This detects and removes any unlikely liquids that leak through the primary liner and prevent these leaks from entering the environment. The third layer is the primary liner system, which consists of two feet of clay or equivalent and a plastic liner. The fourth layer is a leachate collection system to collect and remove any storm water or rainwater that comes into contact with the waste and any liquids that drain out of that waste. Then we have a protective layer that sits over the liners and leachate collection system. This is normally made of one to two feet of sand. This system removes liquids from the landfill. Wait, just a second, who's calling me? It looks like it's Danya from our Kalamazoo office. She's our engineer down there. So I'm gonna go ahead and take this, but thank you so much for your help, Brett. Hey, Danya. Hey, Rhonda. I'm out at the Kent County Landfill, and I heard you had some questions about how everything works. You heard right. Would you like to explain what happens when a landfill is full? Yeah, when a landfill is full, it's closed up with 18 inches of clay or similar material, followed by a plastic liner, then two feet of protective soil. Then they place at least six inches of a topsoil that supports shallow rooted native vegetation. No trees can be planted though. Right, because the roots might puncture the liner. Exactly. Then once the landfill is closed, the cover, leachate, and the gas collection systems must be maintained by the landfill owner. They must set aside money, called financial assurance, to make sure the landfill is closed and properly maintained. So how do landfill engineers manage the smell that comes off that trash? That's where landfill gas management comes in. Landfill gas is produced when organic waste decomposes in the landfill. You should talk with him and Sal to learn more. He's Eagle's landfill gas specialist. I'll do that. Thanks, Danya. Wow, Danya and Brett were really helpful. Let's head into the office and see if we can find Tim Unseld and he can tell us some more about landfill gas. Come on. Hi, Rhonda. Hi, Tim. Do you have a minute I can talk to you about landfill gas? Sure, come on in. So I just got off the phone with Donnie and Brett and they were telling me a little bit about how landfills work. But I still have some questions, particularly about that smell. Can you explain that to me? Sure thing, Rhonda. That smell is landfill gas. When waste decomposes, it is broken down by bacteria into about 50% methane and 50% carbon dioxide and some other trace gases like hydrogen sulfide and mercaptans. Well, I thought carbon dioxide and methane didn't have any smell. You're right, Rhonda. It's actually those trace gases that are to blame. 
They have a very low odor threshold and our nose can detect a very tiny amount. Fortunately, modern landfills have a system to collect this gas and turn it into something useful. The gas is collected through a series of wells and sent to a processing facility where it's either converted into electricity or used as a fuel. This not only helps to control the odor, it also provides a source of renewable energy. That's amazing. But what happens if they don't collect the gas? If the gas isn't collected, it can build up and become a safety hazard. Methane can actually burn or explode if it accumulates. Plus, it's a greenhouse gas that's 25 times more potent than carbon dioxide. Greenhouse gases like these trap heat in the atmosphere. Capturing these gases help to combat climate change. At older landfills, the gas is either passively vented or burn through flares. These methods aren't as effective as collecting the gas and utilizing it like they do at modern landfills. Wow, that's really fascinating stuff. Thanks for explaining this all to us, Tim. No problem, Rhonda. Thanks for stopping by. Thanks to Eagle Staff, we have a better understanding of what a modern landfill looks like and how it protects us. However, the issue of waste management goes far beyond just disposing of our trash. Every year, more and more materials are being disposed of in landfills, including paper, plastic, food waste, and other organics. There are better ways to handle these materials through a process called sustainable materials management. By reducing, reusing, repurposing, recycling, and recovering energy, we can all contribute to a more sustainable future. So the next time that you're thinking about throwing something in the trash, think about the five R's and find a more sustainable way to manage your materials. If you want to learn more about managing waste and sustainable materials management, join us for another episode of Talking Trash. You can also visit michigan.gov slash solid waste for more information. Thanks for watching.